be back with all of you. And today's program is an overview of Ayurvedic education here at College of Ayurveda. I like to look at these talks like you and I are sitting down and we're going to have a cup of tea together. And as we have that cup of tea together, just sit back and relax. We'll talk about Ayurvedic education. And if you have any questions, then uh, you are uh, welcome to, to ask those questions online. And uh, at the end of the program today, I'll be taking many of those questions, as many as we can get to today. And uh, it's an honor and it's a uh, privilege to be able to spend this time with all of you. Namaste. So I thought we'd begin by talking a bit about the history of the California College of Ayurveda and just give an overview of where we came from and well, where we are today. So the California College of Ayurveda was started in 1995. That's when it was founded. And it was founded at a time when there was no Ayurvedic education available in the United States, no formal Ayurvedic education. There were uh, some small programs that were happening with various teachers, but there was nothing organized and no uh, comprehensive curriculum for training practitioners of Ayurvedic medicine. And so the California College of Ayurveda began with the vision and the mission to uh, both provide high quality Ayurvedic education and train practitioners who would go out into communities and practice, and also to build a profession for Ayurvedic medicine here in the United States. And that was how we began back in 1995. Now, we grew steadily from 1995 all the way through to uh, the present time. And in 2010, so nearly uh, now 10 years ago, uh, we purchased the campus that we are currently located in. And the campus that we're located in today is a, a one and a half acre facility. We have 14,000 square feet of space for classrooms, for uh, a clinic. We have overnight facilities for a Panchakarma center. And we have, of course, our uh, faculty and our uh, uh, administrative staff who are here. We feel very honored and privileged to be here. Also on our grounds, we've also developed an, an Ayurvedic herbal teaching garden so that our students can go out into the garden and can learn about the herbs directly, see them directly. We also have a outdoor amphitheater called the Temple of the Rishis, which is an opportunity for students to spend outside and also where we have our special programs. There's so much more here at the college. I hope you'll have an opportunity to come to the college sometime and take a walk around. Uh, we certainly enjoy giving you a tour. Our students from our first graduating class became leaders in the field of Ayurvedic medicine back in 1997 and formed the first state association for beginning to formalize Ayurvedic education, and that was the California Association of Ayurvedic Medicine. Then myself, along with three other individuals here in the United States, we formed the National Ayurvedic Medical Association. Again, this was all part of our mission to develop the infrastructure to build a Ayurvedic, uh, Ayurvedic profession that uh, could, could stand tall and continue to grow here in the United States. Uh, since that time, we have helped to form many organizations, including the National Council on Ayurvedic Education and the National Association of Ayurvedic Schools and Colleges. In 2015, we were the first school approved uh, by the state of California to offer a Doctor of Ayurveda program. And our students graduated, our first group of students who had come back to school to complete their education, graduated a couple of years after that. So since then, we've now graduated three Ayurvedic doctor classes in addition to our Ayurvedic health counselor programs and also our clinical Ayurvedic specialist uh, practitioners. So we're very excited about the development of Ayurveda in the United States. It's certainly growing, and it's a wonderful profession to become involved in. Now, what I'd like to do is just give you an overview of those programs. Now, I mentioned the Ayurvedic Health Counselor Program. So this is a 1,200-hour program, and it takes a various amount of times depending upon which program you're in. I'll give you a little bit more detail about that in just a moment. So the Ayurvedic Health Counselor Program, the academics plus the internship is 1,200 hours. The Clinical Ayurvedic Specialist Program, which includes the Ayurvedic Health Counselor Program, but also additional academics 
and additional uh, internship is an additional 1,400 hours. So together, that's 2,600 hours of study. And this is an estimate, it's a little bit above that, but that'll give you an overview. And then beyond that, our students can go on and attain a certification as an Ayurvedic doctor. And that's an additional 1,000 hours. So in total, to become an Ayurvedic doctor here at the California College of Ayurveda, you'll study approximately 3,600 hours of education. So you get a very, very extensive, very comprehensive education. And there are also different ways in which you're able to participate in that education. So naturally, we have classroom education, which is where our students come and they are there sitting in the classroom uh, in our facilities. We have four different classrooms here at the California College of Ayurveda. And so we offer that program live in the classroom for all of our students. We have students who move here from all over the country and in fact, all over the world to study Ayurvedic medicine. We are the largest school of Ayurvedic medicine outside of India. Now, uh, in, in addition to our classroom education, we also broadcast our classes live over the internet. And what that means is that you can be in the classroom while you're at home. So yes, you're sitting at home just like you are now watching me. We use a little different technology. Uh, we call it VedaWeb. And that technology allows you to sit in the classroom. It also allows you to ask questions, see the class, see the teacher, see the teacher's presentation, and you're held to the same standards as anyone else that is in the classroom. Attendance is taken, you have the same projects, you turn in the same projects, uh, everything is the same as if you were in the classroom. So that's called our live internet classroom. Now, we also have a distance learning program. Now you might think that the live internet classroom is distance learning, and it is technically, but we have another program that is called the distance learning program. And the distance learning program allows you to work more independently, being overseen by a mentor that we call a master teacher. And that master teacher meets with you on a weekly basis to make sure that you're making progress on your work and your assignments. You're turning in the work to your master teacher who is looking at it and meeting with you, answering questions. And because we follow a module format, at the end of each module of your learning, you'll have a more extensive meeting with your master teacher. So we keep a very close eye. It's a highly structured program. Now, our distance learning students, our live internet classroom students, and our uh, classroom students all merge together during their internship programs. And those take place in an intensive format here on the campus of the California College of Ayurveda. So you will all come here and participate in those hands-on intensive learning programs. And those are various durations depending upon the internship that you're in. We have an Ayurvedic health counselor internship. We have a clinical Ayurvedic specialist internship. And we also have an Ayurvedic doctor internship. So you'll come to the California College of Ayurveda during your internship programs if you are studying from home uh, in one of those two programs, Live Internet, or our regular distance learning program. So I hope that gives you an overview of the formats of the program. And now what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit more about the Ayurvedic Health Counselor Program. So the Ayurvedic Health Counselor Program is divided up into two parts. You have an academic training program and you have your internship program. And each of those are a little more than uh, 600 hours. The academic program is, is 627 hours. Then I believe the internship is about exactly 600 hours. Now, if you're studying full-time, now I didn't talk about that, to more formats, they're not really formats, but their approaches to education is full-time education and weekend education. Both of those classes happen in the classroom and also live over the internet, right? So if you're in the full-time program, that means that you're in class nine hours per week, plus you have the option of taking elective classes. If you're in the weekend program, you are in class for one weekend each month. Now, if you're taking the full-time training program, that will take you approximately 
six months to complete the academics and six more months to complete the internship. So it takes one year to become an Ayurvedic health counselor. I wanna make sure I said that correctly. The Ayurvedic health counselor program is six months of academics and six months of internship if you're studying full time. So one year and you can be an Ayurvedic health counselor. Now, if you're doing the weekend training program, the weekend training program, the academics will be approximately one year plus a six month internship. So following the weekend training program, you will be in school for about one and a half years. Now the weekend training programs offer you the opportunity, of course, to be working while you're going to school. You can even work full time while you're going to school. If you're in the full time program, it's more difficult to work full time. You can keep a part time job, but you will want to be able to focus on your education. And so you will need to uh, maybe limit the amount of work you do if you're going to school full time. All right. So that's a bit more about the Ayurvedic Health Counselor program and how long it takes to become an Ayurvedic Health Counselor. Now, maybe I should just define that for you. What is an Ayurvedic Health Counselor? The Ayurvedic Health Counselor is a specialist in preventative medicine and lifestyle-based medicine. Ayurvedic Health Counselors are working with people to help them to transform their lives. Really, that's the foundation of Ayurveda. An Ayurvedic Health Counselor's job is to teach people to live harmoniously in the world and provide them with the counseling and support to be successful implementing Ayurveda into their lives. We all know that it can be perfectly harmoniously. In fact, it can be challenging in your life. So our Ayurvedic Health Counselors are not only studying the academics of what to do and how to do it, they are studying how to help individuals to transform their lives. And that's really where the counseling comes in and why the counseling is so important. So again, one year full-time to become an Ayurvedic health counselor and one and a half years in the weekend program and pretty much in the distance learning program as well in order to become a counselor. Now, many students wanna go on beyond the Ayurvedic health counselor training and become a clinical Ayurvedic specialist. A clinical Ayurvedic specialist takes their Ayurvedic health counselor training to the next level and begins to study disease management. And so they're actually taking classes in diseases of the digestive system, respiratory system, uh, cardiovascular system, uh, classes in the reproductive system of men and women, and so many more fascinating clinical classes. This in addition to the foundational courses in the health counselor program where you study doshas and datus and shrutas and Agni and Ama and Ojas, all the, the fundamental information. All right, so in the clinical Ayurvedic specialist program, you go on and you start to study now disease management. And in addition to your academic training, you'll also have a, uh, you'll also have additional internship. Now, I'll say a little bit more about that, but I wanna remind you, but at the end of the program today, or any time actually during the program, feel welcome to type in your questions and our staff will be writing those down. And I will take those questions at the very end of the program today. And we'll just sit around as if we're having a cup of tea and I'll try my best to answer your questions. So the Ayurvedic Health Counselor Program is about another 830 hours of academics and another 600 hours of clinical internship. And if you're studying in the full-time program, it's going to take about seven months in order to finish the academics of the clinical Ayurvedic specialist program. That's in addition to your earlier studies and another six months of internship. So in total, about 14 months is what it takes in order to complete the second level of training, clinical Ayurvedic specialist, uh, this in addition to your Ayurvedic health counselor training. If you're going to school in the weekend training program or in the distance learning program, it'll take the academic part will take about a year and a quarter to finish. And then it'll take about another six months of internship. It'll take another six months of internship as well. So you're looking at a little over 
a year and a half. So now uh, in, in, it's about uh, actually two years total in the weekend training program. That's just for your clinical Ayurvedic specialist. So I wanna make sure that wasn't confusing for you. So let's say you're studying full-time, okay? You're studying full-time to become an Ayurvedic health counselor takes one year, and it's gonna take a little over a year, another year, to become a clinical Ayurvedic specialist. So now, to become a clinical practitioner, a clinical Ayurvedic specialist, you've been in school for a little over two years in the full-time program. In the weekend program, if you were in school for about a year and a half to become an Ayurvedic health counselor, and now another uh, little over two years in order to become a clinical Ayurvedic specialist. So you've been in school now a little over three years to become a clinical Ayurvedic specialist and study all of the disease management. All right, now many of our students wanna go on to the highest level of education that they can achieve here at the California, uh, California College of Ayurveda. And that education is to become an Ayurvedic doctor. And to become an Ayurvedic doctor is an additional year of study. And during that year of study, our students are gonna take their academic training even deeper. In addition, they're going to be studying the classes necessary to be the bridge between the Ayurvedic practitioner and the Western medical doctor. In other words, you're going to have extensive training and being able to interface with the medical community so that you're really an integrative practitioner. For instance, you will study laboratory diagnosis so that you can read the lab reports and really, and this is unique, you'll be able to interpret them from an Ayurvedic perspective so that you're going to be able to treat the patients entirely uh, from the perspective of Ayurveda. And so uh, that's the Ayurvedic doctor program, and that takes an additional year, all right? So now, if you're studying full-time and you wanna be an Ayurvedic doctor, you're going to be committing yourself to about three years of study, and that's without breaks. So if many students take a little longer because you know, they're gonna take a break. And if you're doing it through the weekend program, it's about four and a half years, again, without your break. So it could be a little bit longer than that with your breaks. And just to put it in perspective for you, that's about how long it takes to become a doctor of chiropractic, how long it takes to become a doctor of oriental medicine. Uh, and, uh, and so Ayurvedic medicine has really evolved to be uh, on par educationally in terms of uh, time commitment and hours with all of those uh, uh, other types of doctors here in the United States. All right. Now what I'd like to do is to uh, tell you about some of the unique features of our program here at the California College of Ayurveda. And the first thing I wanna to mention to you is our herbal training program. Our herbal training program is one of the real highlights of your education here at the California College of Ayurveda. Now you will study herbalism even as an Ayurvedic health counselor, but of course there's more to study. As you go into your clinical training, you will study herbs from a more clinical perspective. You're gonna learn the herbs necessary to treat respiratory illnesses like asthma and how to work with them. You're also going to uh, learn for all the different diseases, urinary tract infections and so forth. More importantly though, you're going to learn how to formulate. You're gonna learn how to design your own formulations so that you can have your own herbal pharmacy at home mix the herbs together and make the different medicines. So in our clinical Ayurvedic specialist program, you will actually have a program in making herbal medicines. You're gonna learn how to make all the, all the Ayurvedic medicines from medicated ghees, medicated oils, nausea medicines, uh, eardrops, uh, capsules, mixing them together and all the principles that go into that. So that you really will be a, an excellent uh, herbalist in your own practice. And that's an important part of Ayurvedic education. Of course, we also have our herbal gardens here. And for students who want to learn how to grow the herbs and take them all the way from seed through to, through to medicine, you will be able to work in the gardens. You'll be able to participate in an elective course called the Herbal Apprenticeship Program. And you will learn to take them all the way from seed to cultivation. You'll watch them grow. You'll take care of them for a whole season here in Nevada City in the gardens. 
And so we, we do offer you that opportunity to get hands-on with those herbs, recognizing them. In addition, there are special programs where you'll be doing local herb walks through the Sierra Mountains and doing uh, local plant identification as a part of that program. So the wonderful, wonderful uh, opportunity that you hear that you have here at school. The next opportunity I want to talk about is our internship programs, because that is really unique here at the California College of Ayurveda. You have that rare opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with patients, and you'll be uh, achieving almost all of your requirements for your internship in personal relationship with your interns, uh, with your patients. And each of your patient visits are overseen by clinical specialists. We don't just send you out in the world, uh, as some programs do, and say, go complete a certain number of visits. Everything that we do here at the California College of Ayurveda is closely overseen. We have very high standards of education. You will have an amazing experience in your internship program. And so you will have that one-on-one -on -one time with patients so that when you graduate, you will have performed already so many consultations it will be very easy for you to go into practice. In addition, during your internship, you're going to learn how to build your practice. And so when you graduate, all you have to do is put the same skills in the practice that you utilize during your internship, and you will be successful in practice. And that's the third part I wanted to mention to you. One of the really unique parts of our program is how successful our graduates are. Our school has the reputation for graduating the most successful graduates in the country. And one of the reasons for that is not only what I believe is an outstanding education that our students are receiving, and outstanding hands-on clinical experience that they're receiving when they're here so that they feel competent, but also because our students are studying success while they're here at school. We have a special curriculum for you that will train you to write a business plan. Think about the types of things that you're going to need to do in order to be successful. And we have a special program that all of our students take in their clinical Ayurvedic specialist program called the Yoga of Success, where you study the physical, emotional, and spiritual principles of becoming successful. And then we apply all of that to your internship program. And so that internship program is an opportunity for you to put it into practice. And when you're successful in internship, you'll be successful in practice as well. Now, one thing I didn't mention about the internship program, you have the opportunity in your internship to do the internship here at the California College of Ayurveda in a professional clinic. We have a full service professional clinic serving our community. And so you can work and have the experience of being a professional, seeing patients in our clinic. And we also offer you the opportunity to do your internship at a distance and we can assign you a clinical supervisor that will oversee every case. Whether you do your internship here at the California College of Ayurveda or you do it in your own community, and we can talk about that another time, how that works, the same standards are held and no treatment is ever prescribed without it being approved by your clinical supervisor. And every case is reviewed by your clinical supervisor so that you never feel like you're out there on your own. And before you can give any herbal formulas, those formulations are approved by your supervisor as well. And they're prepared here at our herbal pharmacy. And yes, we do have an herbal pharmacy here at our clinic. It's another part of the uniqueness of your education here. We have about 200 raw materials that we keep in stock all the time. And we're making medicines to order. Our practitioners write the prescriptions and we fill them and we send them out to your, to your patients. You can also volunteer time in the herb department and gain even more experience, if you wish, making herbal medicines. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about before I take some of your questions are some of the special programs that we have here at the California College of Ayurveda, these elective programs that I mentioned earlier. In addition to your foundational education that, that will include all the fundamental principles of Ayurvedic medicine, that's part of the Ayurvedic Health Counselor Program, and the clinical studies that begin in your clinical Ayurvedic specialist program and culminate in the Ayurvedic doctor program, you have an opportunity to participate in elective courses. And one group of those elective courses, we could say, fall under the umbrella of Ayurvedic massage and body therapies. And so you can learn Ayurvedic massage and the hands-on training that's necessary to give those therapies in your community. 
We have intensives starting at the end of June each year that go all the way into the beginning of August, where you come to the college and we set up hands-on training opportunities for you. So we have these courses, they're all online. Some of them are three days, some of them are five days, some of them are 10 days long. We have programs in Ayurvedic massage that are uh, combined with Shiradhara, which is the oil that pours onto the forehead, herbal steam treatments. You can learn how to provide all of that. We call that Ayurvedic massage and bliss therapy training. In addition, we have programs in Marma therapy or Marma Chikitsa, which are the 107 energetic points on the body. You can learn how to work with those points using massage and essential oils and pranic healing in order to restore the balance and the flow of energy or prana to the various tissues of the body. And we offer that every summer as well uh, in, in an eight day intensive. We also have training programs in providing Ayurvedic facials, Pinda Swedana, uh, Dobastis, which are these beautiful dough dams they're called. They look like this, they're placed over the chakras and over certain organ areas and medicated oils are poured in. We'll talk about how to make those medicated oils. They're really fun to make. And uh, so many more classes. We have a clinical nausea training program, the oils that go into the nose. We have uh, each of these, these, these programs and many more. They're available to you online. You can take a look at our schedule. These programs that are electives, by the way, they're open to everybody in the whole community. Uh, by that, I mean, even if you are not a student here at the California College of Ayurveda, come and participate in our elective training programs or intensive training programs. Like I said, they go anywhere from a few days all the way for some of them uh, to about uh, two weeks long. Feel welcome. Come on into the school, register for just those courses. And, and uh, we're always honored when student and, and every summer students do come from schools all over the country. We also have training in Yoga Nidra, and you can become a certified Yoga Nidra uh, instructor and also in Ayurvedic Yoga Therapy. And that's a two-week intensive for the Ayurvedic Yoga Therapy. It's a four-day intensive to become a Yoga Nidra teacher, tra uh, teacher. So these are some of the special programs that we offer here at the California College of Ayurveda. It's always difficult in a Facebook Live to really convey to you uh, how much we love Ayurveda here at the California College of Ayurveda. Let's just say it's what we, we live every day. It's what we think about every day. It's what we uh, breathe every day. It's certainly what we eat every day. Uh, it is always on our mind. We don't do anything else but Ayurveda here. We're not distracted with trying to provide other forms of education like Chinese medicine or uh, chiropractic or anything else. This is all we do. We are an Ayurveda college and we have been for 25 years. We're about to celebrate our 25th anniversary with a grand celebration uh, that will be taking place in June. June uh, uh, you can look on our, our uh, schedule for the dates. I think it's June 12th, 13th, and 14th. And it'll be a three-day festival and it's free. I, it is. It's free. It's our gift back. We have fantastic teachers that are going to be coming from uh, all over the world. We have Dr. Avanesh Lele coming all the way from Pune. We have Dr. David Brawley coming uh, and many other wonderful teachers. So you have an opportunity to meet some of the iconic figures in uh, our community. But we've been doing this for 25 years. And over 25 years, we have refined our program again and again and again to get the kinks out of the program. And so that's one of the advantages of going to a highly established school is that we're not giving you an experimental education. We're giving you an education that's been highly uh, thought of, highly refined. Our faculty are fully committed uh, to their uh, providing that education to you. And our faculty is entirely cohesive. They all understand the training that you're going through and uh, you're getting a consistent uh, education. Now, I do have some questions uh, that have come in. So I'm gonna take some time now to uh, answer some of those questions. I haven't seen them. This is the first time I'm seeing them right here. They've just been handed to me. So let's see what's on your mind. Uh, uh, Mernush said, asks, can I take this herbal study program online too? So the herbal training is part of your Ayurvedic health counselor program. Then it's part of your clinical Ayurvedic specialist program. So it's all integrated in. And if you're in the live internet classroom or in the distance learning 
uh, program, then yes, you're getting that same education in all the different formats. But what you can't participate in online is the elective that is the herbal apprenticeship program. No matter how good that technology is right now, we can't get you in the garden, okay? We can't get you in the lab making the medicines uh, in our pharmacy. And so if you want the hands-on herbal apprenticeship program uh, for one full season, for that, you're gonna have to move here, okay? Thank you, uh, Mirnish, for your question. Uh, Evie Nicola asks, thank you for hosting questions. Is attendance on site in California required for the internship for AHC1, for Ayurvedic Health Counselor 1? Only for the intensive. So it is required that you come for the intensive for your, uh, for, for your internship. And by the way, it's called Ayurvedic Health Counselor 2 is the internship. Ayurvedic Health Counselor 1 is the academics. You have to complete both of those to become a fully certified Ayurvedic Health Counselor program. So for Ayurvedic Health Counselor 1, academics, no, you don't have to come on site. Ayurvedic Health Counselor 2, internship, Yes, you come for an intensive on site where you'll learn things like pulse diagnosis and other hands on training and examination techniques. You'll be refining all of that. So, you do come on site for that. And, uh, and you can, if I don't know where you live, uh, Evie, but we have students coming in on, on tourist visas from all over the world in order to attend those uh, on site intensives. Uh, another question, if doing all three years of study to complete as an Ayurvedic doctor, if having to choose which internship to spend all six months at CCA, okay, well, you have three internships, right? You'll have your counselor internship, six months. You'll have your clinical internship, six months. You'll have your doctor internship, which goes on for a full year, even while you're doing some, some additional uh, clinical training. How much time you spend at CCA, there's no one right answer because it's very much a circumstantial situation. For instance, if you live outside the country, well, then you're limited by visa issues and you have to work with that. Uh, if you uh, want to come to CCA and you're able to spend the time here, I always encourage people when they have the opportunity, why not do your internship inside a world-class Ayurvedic center where you get that kind of uh, uh, support and experience? So why not do all of your internships here? But there's no one right answer. Much of it depends on your, how your life is organized, where you live, what your financial situation is, so many personal issues. So I would suggest that you ask that question and discuss that with a uh, uh, enrollment counselor here at the school. One of our, our academic support team would be able to talk with you uh, about that, what's gonna work best for you. Uh, would I recommend second or third year? Uh, by that, do you mean the clinical training and then the Ayurvedic doctor training? If you're clinically oriented and you want to be a clinical practitioner, then of course. Uh, if you're thinking of mixing your Ayurvedic education in with uh, maybe your yoga training and doing some lighter uh, lifestyle counseling and lifestyle prevention, uh, work and that's really your love, there's nothing nothing wrong with that, then you would stop at that time. So it really depends upon your dharma. I'll be giving a talk later this year on dharma, which is your purpose, your, your, what you're being guided by your heart to follow and what your path is. And so really people have different dharmas. There's not any one right dharma. Some people's dharma, meaning their purpose or, or where they're inspired is in preventative medicine. And for some people, it's both preventative medicine and clinical medicine. And if you're studying clinical medicine, you might as well go all the way on through to becoming an Ayurvedic doctor. All right. Uh, is it possible to do two months of internship at CCA and the remaining, remaining four months by distance? Uh, I, if I'm understanding your, oh, I see what you're asking. You want to know if you could split your internship up. We don't recommend that because once you start seeing patients, you're responsible for their health care. You become their practitioner and you want to have that experience following their care through all the way through you know, a, a longer period of time. You're working in follow-up visits with them on a regular basis so that you can support them in making the transformation that they need in their lives and watch how their disease progresses as they continue to implement the medicines and the program in their lives. So no, we don't suggest that you split it up. We suggest that you 
choose one or the other. I have another question uh, from uh, Hema. Uh, Hema, uh, he said, I'm just about to commence on my EHC1 training. Congratulations. And you're going to be in the distance learning program uh, with, DC, uh, with CCA. So you're going to be working with one of our mentor master teachers. I'd be so grateful to hear you talk about the most economical or practical way to complete the training up to Ayurvedic doctor level for someone traveling over from the UK. Okay, so you are outside the country. We have many students from outside the country. And so the most economical way for you to do that, being that you're on the other side of the world and you're doing the distance learning program is to do all your academic training first. Okay, this is what we recommend for students who are gonna go all the way through to becoming an Ayurvedic doctor. Do all your academic training first. Do your Ayurvedic health counselor academics. That's like the C1. Then clinical Ayurvedic specialist academics. That's CAS1. Now you're ready to begin your internships. Do your counselor internship, then your clinical internship, and then enter into the doctor program, which includes the internship. So you have two years of internship at the end of your training, okay? Now, you're in the distance learning program. That means that you're going to be coming to the United States uh, three times. You'll come at the start of your Ayurvedic Health Counselor Internship for an intensive for, uh, uh, I don't know the exact days, but maybe a week. You'll come for the intensive at the beginning of your clinical Ayurvedic Specialist program. I think that one's a little bit longer, maybe 10 days to two weeks. And then you'll come at the beginning of your Ayurvedic doctor program, because in each of these intensive, you have hands-on training that can only be done in, per in person. For instance, you're gonna learn how to examine the abdomen and touch the abdomen, push on the liver and push on the kidneys. And we can't teach you that through a book or distance learning. We need a practitioner that's gonna be there working with you so that you really understand what to do. These are tactile skills, just like pulse diagnosis. You wouldn't want to learn pulse diagnosis without ever actually touching a pulse. And so uh, you've got to learn some things hands-on. And in each of, by the way, speaking of pulse diagnosis, in each of these trainings, you're going to go further in pulse diagnosis. So you have your beginning pulse diagnosis as a counselor, intermediate pulse diagnosis as a clinical practitioner, and advanced pulse diagnosis when you get to the Ayurvedic doctor program. All right, I have some more questions for you uh, that have been submitted. Can all the internships up to Ayurvedic doctor level be completed at a distance? Can they be completed at a distance? Well, they can be completed off-site, but again, you have to come to the California College of Ayurveda for your intensives. But yes, they can be completed off-site and we will assign you a clinical supervisor that is a copy of every patient file and is reviewing that prior to your visits and discussing it with you. So yes, it can be done uh, off-site. What is the difference between Gujarat Ayurveda University and CCA? Um, okay, so for those of you that don't know, Gujarat Ayurveda U University is one of the most famous universities in India. I had the honor and privilege of spending time at, at Gujarat Ayurveda University in uh, 1999. I really enjoyed it tremendously. Uh, in, in some ways, uh, they're similar, and in some ways, they're different. Uh, what's the difference? Boy, that's a big discussion. Maybe I can simplify that to simply say that how Ayurveda, is, the scope of practice of Ayurveda in India is very different than the scope of practice of Ayurveda in the United States. In India, Ayurvedic doctors study a lot of Western medicine, and they're able to prescribe many pharmacological medicines, they're able to do minor surgery. So therefore, the education is very different. The education is very much the same otherwise in terms of the principles of Ayurvedic, the Ayurveda that you are uh, studying, okay? So there's many differences. The style of teaching is different. The way education is taught, even in, in, uh, 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 before students in India go to uh, in an Ayurvedic school, just the way in which Westerners approach Ayurvedic education and how they organize it is different than the way that Ayurvedic education is organized and delivered in India. So they're, they're, they're very different. It was very helpful for me to travel around India visiting various Ayurvedic schools and colleges to learn how they are approaching Ayurvedic education. I like to think that we took the best of what we uh, uh, found and is appropriate for 
uh, the West. Now, in terms of the academics and what you actually study, all Ayurvedic is the same sources. It comes from the classical Ayurvedic textbooks. So you're going to study knowledge that originates in the Charaka Samhita, Shashrut Samhita, Ashtankaridea, Ashtank Samgraha, Shrangadara Samhita, Madhava Nadanam, and other classical textbooks of Ayurvedic medicine that make up the curriculum in India and make up the curriculum here at the California College of Ayurveda. So in that sense, they're very much the same, but there are so many differences. And of course, you mentioned the most famous, Ayur one of the most famous Ayurvedic universities in India. And in many ways, just in terms of their, their size and dedication, we can only aspire to uh, be able to have a beautiful 50-year-old uh, 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 trees and herbal trees growing in our gardens as well. We don't have that. Uh, so there's many differences. And that's a wonderful discussion that we could go on at, about at another time. Uh, is there an entrance exam to come into the school? No, there's not an entrance examination to come into the school unless English is your second language. We are required to give you a second language English exam just to make sure that you're going to be able to thrive in our program. No, there is no entrance exam. How would someone from India become an Ayurvedic doctor at CCA? You know, go to school just like anybody else. Uh, so we have students in the UK that we were just uh, talking about that's in our distance learning program. It would be the same for somebody in India. Can an Ayurvedic student do clinical practice in the USA? Oh, absolutely. Our school is approved uh, for uh, uh, training Ayurvedic doctors here in California. And while the laws are different in each of the 50 states in California, it's not illegal to practice Ayurvedic medicine in the United States. So the answer to that question is, yes, you can practice clinically in the United States, so long as you adhere to your state laws. And we will train you in a way that adheres to uh, state law. What does the salary look like for an Ayurvedic doctor in the USA? You know, the, the training to be an Ayurvedic doctor in the USA is very new. They do studies about things like that. Uh, there is only one study that has been done or one thing that has been published and that is the average salary of somebody practicing Ayurveda in the United States. And that's about $75,000. Now, Ayurvedic doctors have the potential to make more. Uh, that's relatively new. Only the last few years have we been graduating Ayurvedic doctors. So we don't have a lot of uh, statistics out about that. But if you're a successful practitioner, there is no, way that you, uh, no reason why you should not be able to sustain yourself in a healthy lifestyle while you are practicing Ayurvedic medicine. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, our graduates are among the most successful graduates in the country. And they are opening up clinics, they're opening up spas, uh, they're doing clinical practice. And really that's the, the highest level of practice is when you open up your own clinic and you are seeing patients and taking care of your own community. You become like a beacon of light for people in your community where that light will guide them toward health and harmony. And that's a physical, emotional, and spiritual journey. Uh, what does the sal? Oh, I, I answered that question about salary. Let's see if we have anything I haven't answered yet. Uh, here's one. For clinical, how many days a week would it be for existence and how many hours per week? Well, you know, when you're doing your, uh, your internship, uh, how many hours a week depends on, is different for each person. It's difficult to say that. It's not like uh, classroom education. How long it takes you to to do the paperwork associated with a case, you're gonna be trained in organizing your files, your patient files, organizing your data, how much time you spend with your patients. All of this we talk about in class, but during your clinical internship, I don't recommend that you work more than a part-time job, okay, during your clinical internship. And for many people, they'll thrive if they're not working any job at all. So the more you can focus on your education, the more you will thrive as an Ayurvedic student. So the more distractions you have, the more challenges you're going to have. And indeed, some of our students do have challenges in terms of uh, succeeding because of outside distractions. It is difficult if you're a single parent and you're trying to work and raise kids and go to school at the same time. I want to remind everybody, this is very serious education. This is not a light program. Uh, we have very high standards, uh, I, I would argue the highest standards in the United States. And so with that in mind, if you can't focus on your education, this might not be the best program for you. 
And if you're looking just for a light program that maybe you'll finish, maybe you won't, maybe you'll take it seriously, maybe you won't, this isn't that school. Okay? All right. Um, how often is the NASHA program offered and when's the next one? I don't have the dates of the, the NASHA program. It's offered once per year, the clinical NASHA training. And so you can go online to our website and you can take a look at our workshops. You can also call the school and ask for the dates. I just don't have all the programs available to me right here. I have some dates for some upcoming programs. We have our Ayurvedic Health Counselor Program, weekend training program. Our spring program is starting March 7th this year. And our full-time program is starting March 17th. And that's available, of course. Uh, both of those are available live over the internet as well as in the classroom. You can begin distance learning the first of any month. That's where you work with a mentor and you're following uh, a highly structured guided program. It's not open-ended. It's not maybe I'll finish it, maybe I won't. Okay? It's a highly structured program working with a master teacher. We have a Yoga Nidra self-healing mini retreat. That's coming up February 29th to March 1st at the Integral Yoga Institute in San Francisco. And the Ayurvedic Facials Workshop, the next one is coming up March 20th to March 23rd. By the way, if you get on our mailing list, you will get a weekly newsletter. One of them is about education. One of them is about our body therapy training programs. Uh, there are different themes for each newsletter. And so make sure you've signed up online at our website, ayurvedacollege.com, for uh, the newsletter. And that will keep you in touch with everything that's going on here. All right, here's a, a question from Leslie Elliott. Are there different types of Ayurveda? For example, recently I read a book about Deepak Chopra, by Deepak Chopra who talks about Maharishi Ayurveda. Uh, is there different types? And what are the differences and similarities? Uh, <laughs> there's not really different types of Ayurveda. It's, it, it's either Ayurveda or it's not Ayurveda. Some people have tried to brand their Ayurveda. And back in the 1990s, uh, uh, 1980s, the Maharishi's organization tried to brand Ayurveda as the Maharishi Ayurveda. Uh, but no, there's not any, uh, there aren't different types of, of, of Ayurveda. And uh, there are different types of education, though. And today in the United States, there are still not a lot of uniformity. And so a lot of people can offer some very basic beginner intro classes and call them by fancy names. Many people do these programs, but they never actually practice. Our program is longer than most programs. It's deeper than most programs. It may be more expensive than many programs, not all of them, but you will get the training that you need to be a successful practitioner. We take that seriously. If you are not able to successfully practice when you graduate, then why are we doing what we do? If you're not able to go into your community and transform their lives, and we're not fulfilling our dharma, so we take every student's education very seriously here at the California College of Ayurveda, and we'll provide you with the, the education and the support you need to become as successful as possible, okay? Now, of course, every student is different. Some students have inclinations there where they're very driven and they're gonna become extremely successful. Some are less driven, a little more mellow, uh, harder to motivate. This has to do with your nature, right? And so we will provide you with both the academic training, the professional training, the success training you need uh, to become successful. Of course, only you can actually do that work. You actually have to do that work in your community. And we will also guide you postgraduately to various resources that you can utilize in order to continue your motivation and inspiration. CCA students are widely known throughout the United States to be the most successful practitioners in the United States. And it's because of the quality of training, the focus of our training, and also that we empower our students. And it's really empowering you that is so important in your education. All right, uh, any plans or possibilities to group the elective trainings close to the internship intensive so that those traveling from abroad can easily attend? You know, we have so many students starting all around and all times of the year. So no matter where we move it to, some students it's gonna work out easy for them, some students it's gonna work out more difficult for them. Uh, so there is no one way to do that. We also have uh, internships starting throughout the course of the year because we have so many training programs here at the uh, college. So unfortunately, it's a, it's a matter of scheduling and that is, that's always a wild card. All right, 
Uh, let's see. I think I've answered these questions. I've got, they just keep flowing in. You guys are a great group. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, for clinical, how many days a week would it be for distance and how many hours per week? Well, I think you mean, again, are you talking about now the clinical Ayurvedic specialist program? When you get into the academic part of the clinical Ayurvedic specialist program, it's the same. Uh, full time is, is nine hours a week. Weekend is one hour per week. But you do have a lot of work to do outside of class. I really want to make that, um, I really want to make that point. It's not just your classroom time, it's your study time. It is your projects that you're working on. So it's more than just your classroom education. And that's why uh, no more than part-time education if you're in uh, the full-time program, all right? And, and if you're in the weekend program, it's challenging, but you can do uh, some full-time job at the same time. But it's going to be hard. I'm going to emphasize that the more you can focus on your education, the more harmonious your education will be for you. Right, and you're going to enjoy it a lot more because it's just less less stress. Uh, what is the scope of practice in Texas? Uh, she tell, uh, I'm not an expert in Texas law or memorizing the 50 states. So when you get into school, we'll talk about the various laws in various states. Uh, I am an expert in California, obviously, uh, but you're asking about the scope of practice in Texas. Let me suffice it to say that in nowhere in the United States is it illegal to practice Ayurvedic medicine if you practice within the existing laws of your state. And we get into that in more detail during your program. Uh, Mary Beth asks, talking with your staff, they said that if you're coming into the program from another school that you can test into the program. And that's right, you can. We do have an entrance exam for students that went to other schools. Uh, because Ayurvedic education differs significantly in terms of its quality throughout the country, we do ask that students who go to other schools and want to transfer to our school, and, and we have students doing this every week, uh, we do ask you to take a placement exam. Think of it as a placement exam, not an entrance exam. We see where your strengths are, we see where your challenges are, and then we put you in the classes that you need to come up to speed with the other students so that you don't have to take necessarily the entire Ayurvedic health counselor training program. One of the big differences between our school and many others is that we utilize a lot of case histories and extensive pathology study, even in the counselor training program. And so in schools that don't have that training, a lot of students struggle uh, with that. All right. Uh, what you've been told is that most students do not pass. Well, um, most students don't pass entirely because like I said, Training differs so much in the United States, and we arguably have the highest standards of anybody in the country. Most students are exempted from some of the classes, but not all of the classes. So it's not a pass-fail type of an exam. It's a placement exam to see where you fit within the education here at the California College of Ayurveda. Uh, and so why do students uh, not pass? I think that really answers that question. It's not that they don't pass. Is that they don't get exempted usually from the entire program. That's not to say that some students haven't. Um, some students do. There are exceptional students um, everywhere. And so, uh, but most of the students that take the placement exam are exempted from some classes and they have to take other classes in order to catch up. Well, I have really enjoyed my time with all of you. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your questions. There are just so many of them here. The papers are, 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 are piling up. Uh, Gosh, I want to answer your questions. I'll try one more. Uh, uh, Suzanne asks, which courses do you recommend for an esthetician? All the body therapy courses are going to be great. Those summer intensives are going to be wonderful. If you take the summer intensives and you've never studied Ayurveda, then uh, we do ask you to take a foundations class so that you can understand our language in class. And that foundations class is not our counselor program. It's a one-month a distance learning program specific for students that are not going to study to become practitioners, but want to learn the Ayurvedic massage and body therapy treatments and facials and things like that. You can talk to our, our staff about that. Um, all right. I, um, I think I've, I've answered about as many as I can. There's just so many, so many questions on this page. I want to make myself available to you. I want to make my staff available for you. If you have more questions, feel welcome to uh, uh, contact me. Uh, I'm going to give you my email. I know that's dangerous to do online here because now I'm going to get a thousand emails. Okay, 
but I'm going to give it to you, drh at ayurvedacollege.com. And our, our email at the college is info at ayurvedacollege.com. And you're welcome to contact me with some of the questions that I couldn't get to today. Um, there is a delay usually in me answering emails, so please be patient. And um, if you have any questions, it's also a great idea to, to contact uh, the school and speak to our um, uh, enrollment team. Uh, the counselors uh, in our academic department are there to answer your questions about our program. They may not be able to answer your Ayurveda questions. Um, one last Ayurveda question, because I saw it, and they won't be able to answer it. And that is, are there differences in pulse diagnosis at different schools? Pulse diagnosis is not standardized even in India. Uh, beyond some of the basics in Chiranga, there are some Hita that talk about the gati of the pulse, meaning um, its character. Uh, here at the California College of Ayurveda, you will have extensive pulse diagnosis training uh, in, in from entirely from an Ayurvedic perspective. Uh, we don't integrate any Chinese medicine into the pulse diagnosis. So you're going to be able to study Prakriti and Vikruti. You're going to be able to uh, look at the, the Guravadi Gunas in the pulse, the 10 pairs of opposite qualities. You're also going to be able to look at the elements in the pulse, uh, all of this, to really fully understand what's going on in the patient. The goal of pulse diagnosis is to be able to understand what's happening in the patient and use that along with the rest of your exam to put together an appropriate uh, treatment program uh, for your patient. And the last question <laughs> before we leave today uh, is uh, about scholarships. And are there any scholarships to come to school here at the California College of Ayurveda? And the answer is uh, yes, there are scholarships that are available and you can talk to our uh, enrollment team about that. Some are larger scholarships than others. We have a, a pool of funds uh, that have been accumulated for scholarships and we give out scholarships uh, for various purposes throughout the year. And they can talk with you more about that. So many blessings to all of you on your Ayurvedic educational journey, whether you choose to come to our school or choose to study anywhere else, I am just so moved by your heart that you are, are, are inspired to study a science that is, is thousands of years old, that understands the deeper knowledge of what it means to be well. In Ayurveda, we use the word swasta, which means to be fully established in yourself. And this is also the word for perfect health. And when you establish in yourself, when you're solid in who you are, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, your body will exhibit its maximum potential. And this is the goal of Ayurveda. And for anyone to dedicate their life to studying Ayurveda, to serving their community of Ayurveda, uh, with, with Ayurveda, this is, to me, a beautiful dharma. I want to acknowledge you, and I want to thank you for the work that you do after you graduate out in the world, because that is that's the most beautiful work there is. What kind of, well, what's more beautiful than helping people to be well, to be balanced, to be harmonious? Because from that state of being, we naturally love. And, you know, we talk about this at the school a lot, but, uh, you know, all healing comes down to love. That love that we exude, for ourselves in our healing, when we love every cell of our being, every cell of our body, every molecule of body, and that love that we exude toward our patients. And so there's, there's just so much there for us to talk about, but we'll have to save so much of that for another day. Many blessings to you. Namaste.